Shangri-La Frontier, probably my favorite anime of the season so far. Honestly, I could go on and on about the show. That could probably be a later episode, let me know. The reason for this video is that I wanted to break down the full dive gear inside of Shangri-La Frontier and how we have the technologies today, or at least the precursors, for a full dive game to be an actual thing, something that's realistically achievable within our lifetimes or even right now. Firstly is AI. Honestly, we're not even going to scratch the surface. We're only going to focus on the parts of AI which will be beneficial to a VR game. For example, NPCs being able to talk to each other without a developer having to babysit every single interaction or craft every single dialogue option. And so this is a demo of this new technology running in the Unreal Engine City demo where you can speak to any AI on the street. You can actually walk up and talk. When's the last time you got a haircut? I actually just got one last week. Maybe it wasn't good enough. I mean, it's not really my taste, but I guess if it works for you, I feel, dude, he just made me feel bad. Why is he so depressed? What do you mean it's not your taste? Do I look bad? Maybe I should go get another one. If I'm being real, I would consider it. Hold on. Why do you think your opinion matters? I don't need your input on my appearance. Enough about your haircut, bro. That's a, a nice green shirt you got on. Oh, Thanks. Okay. I guess. I was just hoping to have a friendly It's just a shirt, wait. though. Nothing special. Bro, this is insane. I'll be honest, it sounds like you're a little upset. Is there anything going on you need to talk about? And you're just figuring that out now. Maybe it's because you keep commenting on things that aren't your business. So that was player to NPC. Now here's two NPCs and a player character. I recently came across a tutorial video on implementing a dynamic conversation system in Unreal Engine. It's quite fascinating. I'm not familiar with Unreal Engine, but I'm sure it's a powerful tool. Could you tell me more about the tutorial? The tutorial walked through the process of setting up a system where non-player characters can interact with each other based on certain triggers and conditions. That sounds really cool. I'm sure it would be a great way to make virtual worlds more immersive. Hello, player. We were just discussing a tutorial on implementing a dynamic conversation system in Unreal Engine for virtual worlds. What do you think about this system? Well, actually, you guys are now talking through this system, and we are making the tutorial about you. Oh, I see. That's quite meta. So, we're essentially creating a tutorial about implementing dynamic conversation systems using me as an example. That's an interesting approach. So having AI NPCs can help with dynamic and adaptive behaviors. So that means uh, NPCs exhibiting more realistic behaviors and dynamics. So more realistic interactions. Uh, autonomous world building. So that means the AIs themselves are changing and influencing the world. So like a real world economy inside the game. That would be really cool. VR or virtual reality is something super important for full dive games. And we're going to go over how much more advanced the graphics have gone and also the processing power of VR headsets. Both did these scans for uh, this research project that, that we have at Meta called Codec Avatars. And the idea is that instead of actually, instead of our avatars being cartoony, um, and instead of actually transmitting a video, what it does is we've sort of scanned ourselves and a lot of different expressions. and we've built a computer model of sort of each of our faces and, and bodies and uh, the different expressions that we make and collapse that into a, a codec that then when you have the headset on your head, it can, it, it sees your face, it sees your expression, and it can basically send um, an encoded version of what you're supposed to look like over the wire. So, um, so in addition to being photorealistic, it's also actually so the visual aspects of a full dive MMORPG are looking real good because you got companies like Apple and Meta investing a crap ton of money and resources into the development of better VR technology. And with things like Wi-Fi and cloud computing getting faster and faster, you won't need a monstrous gaming rig to power your VR headset so you can go into the full dive game. Brain computer interfaces or BCIs are the bread and butter of a full dive game. Being able to control the game without moving your body is the next level step, is the step that most animes are using or implementing. And it's I'm going to show you something that's actually really crazy because 
we thought this would never happen within our lifetimes, but it's actually here right now. Controlling something with your mind or controlling a game with your mind. To reconstructing the image. So the way this worked was they put human beings inside an fMRI machine. They had them look at images and figure out what the patterns are, like translate from uh, image to brain patterns. And then of course they would hide the image. So this is a image of a giraffe that the computer has never seen. It's only looking at the fMRI data. And this is what the computer thinks the human is seeing. Yeah. Now to get state of the art, here's where the combinatorial aspects, why you can start to see these are all the same demo. To do this kind of um, imaging, the latest paper, the one that happened even after this, which is already better, uses stable diffusion, uses the thing that you use to make art. Like what should a thing that you use to make art have anything to do with reading your brain? But of course it goes further. So in this one, they said, can they understand um, the inner monologue, the things you're saying to yourself in your own mind. Mind you, by the way, when you dream, your dream, like your visual cortex runs in reverse, so your dreams are no longer safe. Um, but we'll try this. So they had people watch a video and just narrate what was going on in the video in their mind. So there's a woman, she gets hit in the back, she falls over. This is what the computer reconstructed the person thinking. See a girl, looks just like me, get hit in the back, and then she is knocked off. So our thoughts like, are starting to be decoded. Yeah. Controlling your movement with your mind? Check. Now we just need a way to feel everything that's happening in the game. Light pressure to the robotic fingers. Metal. Those physical sensations are converted into electrical signals that are fed directly back into Nathan's brain. Through this brain-machine interface, electrical signals are delivered as precise stimulation that his brain interprets as though his own fingers are being touched. Index, index, ring. Despite being blindfolded, Nathan can identify with nearly 100% accuracy Pinky. which fingers on the robotic hand are being touched. 20 out of 20. What does this mean for the future of neurotechnology? DARPA has previously shown that a brain interface can be used to direct the movements of a robotic arm. Now, with this new development of adding sensation by directly sending signals from the robotic hand back into the brain, we have closed the loop between human and machine. At DARPA, we are always- Now I understand, you don't want someone drilling into your skull and implanting electrodes. But that video was from seven years ago and research and development into this technology has only gotten better. It's gotten to the point where they're able to read your EM waves without needing to be inside your skull. Granted, more research needs to be done for sending signals to your brain, especially virtual ones that mimic the entire world. Now that's going to take some, uh, that's going to take some geniuses to go at it. So realistically, we're going to have a ready player one type situation. I mean, we already have it now is just a little advanced. We're probably in a 1.0 stage of Ready Player One. So the next step is controlling the game with your mind and having only visual and auditory inputs and maybe even physical inputs through a haptic feedback suit. But that's about it when it comes to the real feeling. But that's still enough to get a really good immersion into the game. So in conclusion, we have the technologies. We already have a low level Ready Player One situation going on. We just need someone or a group of people to bring all the technologies that we already have to create a full dive game where you're able to control it with your mind. And then it's going to be a lot of research and development into creating a full dive game where you feel everything.